Hey there, Netrunners! Welcome back to the 20 sided store in Brooklyn, New York. The date that this video recorded was Sunday, May the 18th? Yep, May 18th, 2014. Had us a tournament, played some games. Usually, you know, I mean, for the past many months, if you've been watching the videos, you know I've been playing the same two decks um, because they've been working. Uh, last time they didn't work, but, you know, um, I don't think those decks are necessarily dead yet. They could be... They're still pretty strong. Um, but, you know, since this is just like a, you know, a small tournament and I was getting bored of making videos of the same two decks, I made some new decks. I don't think these decks are going to be tournament worthy at least not anytime soon but wanted to mess around with a lot of new cards uh, from the H&P honor and profits wanted to make the videos a little different show you something new so I'm gonna play some Jinteki and some criminal the H&P factions round one Shuffling the cards up. I'm playing Personal Evolution. Yeah, I didn't use the new identity, but I got plenty of new cards in there. Don't you worry. Uh, going up against Kit. Kit is probably <laughs> the anti Jinteki, <laughs> right? Because, um, well, I guess if you're playing the no ice Jinteki, right, then, um, you know, Kit punishes you because pretty much any Kit deck worth its salt has plenty of punishing cards such as indexing account siphon vamp right those are those are the cards that that kit uses because her ability basically guarantees early successful runs so in in a kit deck you can play events that make early successful runs very very punishing and it's very effective so um if you play a low ice jinteki right kit's gonna get in because she's a kit and she's gonna punish you hard with Siphon, Vamp, Indexing, uh, etc. Right? So Jinteki is not very good against that. And if you're a high ice Jinteki, right? Well, that's that's a problem. Is like, you know, your part of your game plan is is making those ice hit, right? Um, and that's you know, I guess you, know, you might be running a sort of a taxing ice Jinteki, right? Things like pup and pop up window and uh, Snowflake and, and you know, the, the taxing ones, in which case Kit isn't really hurt too much, you know, it doesn't, Kit isn't very much more effective against that, because it doesn't matter what type of ice it is, right? Uh, it's just going to, she's going to pay Gordian Blade, or she's going to pay nothing with Yagasaurus, right? Um, but if you're the kind of Jinteki that's trying to hurt somebody by making ice subroutines fire, right, Kit is very annoying, because you know, most Jinteki players, they put out, you know, you put out a row of ice at the beginning of the game, and, you know, it's going to be like Neural Katana and something. And that's supposed to scare the runner away from early runs, you know, give you that early breathing room, right? Jinteki is, is not as strong as the other factions, if you, you know, in just general Netrunner sense. And the strength, you know, the, the only way it can survive is because it's so scary and, and damaging and can kill you, um... You know, it wards off early runs, right? You can't run early. Well, if you're Kit, you can run against your techie early. But this player chose not to, my opponent. Um, so, pushing out the early house of knives. This is a big play coming out of your techie lately. When, you know, you put down an unadvanced card in a remote, and then they triple advance House of Knives. And House of Knives is really easy to score out of Jinteki. And once they have one scored, it's incredibly dangerous uh, for the runner. Um, unless, you know, even if you have Deus Ex, it's like, no, you're going to need, you know, even, or Ned Shield, right? And that's not good. Feedback Filter is the card you're going to need uh, nowadays if you really want to be able to, to stop things like House of Knives, at least really stop them. Um, I mean, you can't be going to using a whole Deus Ex recursion to stop one net damage, right, from the House of Knives uh, if, if it's going to put you in a dangerous situation, right? Um, so, okay, so this, you know, he's doing something interesting, right? He has a magnum opus. The strength of magnum opus 
is that you don't put other economy cards in your deck. It saves slots, right? You just put in three Magnum Opus and then some tutors for it. And then the rest of the... And the tutors are... You, you know, SMC and Test Run are useful for things besides Magnum Opus. And then you take all the other economy cards out. Maybe you leave Sure Gamble in, maybe. But you don't put in Daily Cast or whatever, right? But he's put he has tons of economy cards in his deck. Just some ridiculous amount. He keeps playing them. Um, sure Gambles. You know... Uh, daily casts and the magnum opus and it's like um why do you you know he's, he's getting just ridiculous amounts of money and i guess once he has a gordian blade that's you know he's able to uh, break pretty much anything with that ridiculous amount of money but it's like too much money <laughs> uh, you could have just taken eight you know and it, it's he's also against jinteki all those other economy cards you're playing cards Magnum Opus actually helps you a lot against Shinteki because you can get extra money without having to play additional cards and then draw back up for defense, right? And see there, even with all these money cards, he didn't have the money to trash the Hokusai Grid. It's mostly because he installed that daily cast. Um, anyway, but he got his early access. He stole my one Philotic, which I happened to get early. Um, you know, he's taking a little bit of damage. He's also doing, he's, he's running last click, um, you know, which is the sign of someone who, who hasn't played against Jinteki a lot, right? You don't run last click ever, ever. All right, so he wants to get rid of my Hokusai. He does. Get rid of his scavenge. He's going to access. Trashes my Cerebral. Okay. That's one thing. People are afraid to run Jinteki's hand because their hand might be full of snares and stuff, right? Well, this... At worst, what do you have in the deck? Three snares, three shiku, and three shock. So you can count how many there are in archives and other places, um, and account for them. Jinteki, their hand usually is full of those traps, right? The the June bugs and the cerebral overriders and the, the other things that haven't yet been installed, and those are not dangerous when they're in the hand, right? The best way to to avoid having to say run a double advanced cerebral in a remote is to trash that Cerebral before it gets to the remote. And the best way to do that is to run HQ, because when Jinteki draws that trap, they're not just going to install Advanced Events immediately, especially if they can't afford it or it's not a good time, right? They're going to hold on to it and wait for, for a good opportunity, right? And a nice a time when they think that you're going to run, um, you know, when you're, when you're pressured, right? You can't install Advanced Events a trap when the runner absolutely cannot run, where they'll just be like, nope, not running it. Right, you have to do it in a time where they're a little pressured. They don't really want to run, but they could if they really squeeze it in there, and then you get them to do it. And so if it's not that kind of time, then uh, you can't set your trap. You hold on to it. So as a runner, don't be afraid to run Jinteki's HQ these days. That's what you have to do. Right, so he's running R&D. I think I have a data mine there, which is why. Um, uh, not resonant because it's kit, and he'll pay one, and he'll know it's a data mine. Uh, so I'm trying to draw a lot of cards here. Uh, you notice I happily played medical research, right? Give the runner some money because um, he's got all the money. And he's a magnum opus, so what do I care if I give him some more money, right? It doesn't matter to me. Money is not what's going to make this game happen, right? Uh, the unavoidable things like House of Knives is what's going to make this happen. Also notice, even though he's a Shaper and even though he's SMC, he hasn't gone to get a Deus Ex uh, or anything like that. I don't think he he knows the Deus Ex play, right? Yeah, what's he going to use his SMC for? The Gordian Blade, I think? Yeah. That'll help him defeat the Ice, but it will not uh, help him at all um, with any net damages, so... Well, and now that you know Kit has a Gordian Blade, Kit's going to be pretty bold. Yeah, and why not be bold? What do you what do you have to be afraid of? What do you have to be afraid of? 
Not ice, at least not the first ice that you hit each turn. Last click running, again, right? Well, here's a card I'm going to show you guys right now that is ridiculously... I don't know if it's underrated, but people have not been talking about this card very much at all. Um, and I saw this card and I said, oh my god, this card, I am playing this. Because watch what this does right here. All right, are you going to access? Yeah? Okay, you're going to access. I'm thinking about it here because it's it's a little expensive, right? I'm mostly thinking about the data mine, right? So I don't res the data mine. He accesses Tori Hanzo, this card. So you pay three to res, and then you pay, when you do the first net damage, you can pay two to turn it into a brain damage. So it costs five credits, effectively, to do one brain damage. Uh, and you need to have a source of net damage. So I have the House of Knives. <laughs> so there we go, an unavoidable brain damage in an upgrade right it's not like some cerebral might trap them might not trap them it's not like some ice they might break it this is an unavoidable brain damage it's i you know i think we might need some clarification on it because it says when you would do a net damage pay two so would do does that mean that you know let's say a subroutine fires on um i don't know a yagura uh, a yagura right um, look, another Tori Hanzo, boom, right in the back, and then a hedge fund. Um, so let's say a subroutine and a Yagura fires, and then they want to use a net shield to prevent that net damage. Well, I would have done a net damage, so can I turn that into a brain damage, thus making it unpreventable? Or do they prevent that net damage, therefore I wouldn't have done it, and I can't turn it into a brain damage because, you know, the net damage actually has to hit. Right, that language is very unclear. Uh, yet I'm sure I can go look up the answer on the internet, which I will do. Um, but it's just yet another bad example of FFG being really bad at writing cards. Right? They could just say, you know, if the runner, uh, you know, receive uh, a net damage that was not prevented, or you know, something that is not ambiguous. Right, so we don't have to go to the internet to get the answer. He runs R&D again, and I do the same thing again. I pay five, and one of my House of Knives, and now he's got two brain damage. Ooh, dangerous times, Jinteki. All right, you can see that parasite there. So basically, his game plan, uh, he's gonna access. The game plan of his kit deck seems to be, you know, get your Gordian blade, get a pile of money to break any kind of ice. Um, and then use Parasite to keep all the servers down to, like, one ice. Uh, that way you don't really need the other breakers. And you know what? That's not a bad thinking. Um, that's going to work against sort of these low ice decks, um, like this Jinteki deck, right? Where I'm not stacking servers really deep. Um, but now that I've seen, uh, sort of what he's up to, right? Because he, he threw that Parasite out, um... I can sort of react to that. Right before I saw the parasite, I didn't realize um, what he was up to completely, but now I know. So I'm gonna, uh, and I don't see any data suckers either to help those parasites out. So I'm not really afraid of him like dropping a clone ship, running and bringing the parasite out to trash anything. He also only has one free memory, which is enough for one parasite. So uh, he's gonna run R and D. So. I'm going to flip a data mine. I'll see if he lets it hit or not. He pays one to break it, which means it stays on the table, which is very interesting. Uh, and then he bravely keeps going. Okay, so I'll use my other data mine and make it hit. I was thinking about not resing those data mines there. Um, right? Um, but... I figured I have one still. Okay, so now here he hits a fetal, right? So it was actually good that I went with the data mines. Uh, if I would have used that House of Knives, he would have been dead right now, right? Um, he can't score the fetal because he'll lose the game. <laughs> but he has to lose his whole hand. 
Uh, it's also important to note here that it's too late for me to use my House of Knives, right? The last paid ability window is after the runner says they're going to access, but before they actually do access. So um, it was not possible for me to be like, oh, it's a fetal, now I'll use my House of Knives. Now I can't do that. Um, if I would have used the House of Knives and then he, after he said he was going to access, the game would have been over right now. But I wasn't going to waste my one and only... Yeah, we're discussing it now. I wasn't going to waste my one and only remaining House of Knives uh, token uh, on something that you know was a chance to kill, right? If I had known for sure that that was a fetal or something, or thought that there were really good odds of it, then it wouldn't have been a waste. Um, I mean, we know for now it wouldn't have been a waste, but I wasn't going to gamble when that token uh, might be able to bring me the kill later on in the game, right? Because who knows if I'll get any more of those tokens. Um, so, you know, don't use it on a possible kill when you can use it for a guaranteed kill, right? Oh, I drew the fetal. Shocking. Uh, so I have Melange now. Boom. I really like Melange uh, in Jinteki nowadays. Um, mostly because I'm not the kind, at least if you're doing a kill trappy deck like this one, I'm not a fan of Celebrity Gift. A lot of people like Celebrity Gift so much. But it's like any time I've ever had Celebrity Gift in a game, I keep trying to use it like other people use it. And I look at my hand and I say to myself, I don't want the runner to see any of this. Right? I cannot let them see anything. And then when I'm playing as a runner and someone Celebrity Gifts me every single time, it's like the money they get doesn't really bother me. And it's like, thank you for the gift. I love to see all those cards in your hand. Now I know exactly what to do. Right? So... Not a fan of Celebrity Gift, at least not in a not in a deck of, of trapping and killing, right? Uh, I think maybe a certain kind of deck, especially Cerebral Imaging, but I think there are certain kind of Jinteki decks that uh, Celebrity Gift is good in, and this isn't it. But Melange is great because you, you know, you have Snare, Shock, GQ, House of Knives, Melange. Um, and if you have an Ice, Edge of World. <laughs> uh, not really Edge of World, right? And any of those cards are cards that you install face down unadvanced. No advanced cards, right? So Jinteki puts down, you know, a no advanced card. Okay, if that's a House of Knives, you got to run it. If it's a Melange, you got to run it, right? Um, but if it's, I don't know, a Shikyu, a Snare, or a Shock, you don't want to run it. It could even be, you know... A uh, Tori Hanza with a data mine in front of it in a remote, or a, just a Hokusai all by itself, or all kind, right? And that no advance, you know, it could be a fetal that's unadvanced. Um, so that no advance really, you know, is difficult uh, for non Jinteki, you know, the, the runner to deal with. Um, so Melange is a great no advance on the flip side. There's plenty of no advance cards that will hurt the runner if they hit it. But, you know, the only ones you have that are good um, for them to not hit it are agendas, right? So Melange is a good one that's uh, not an agenda to test to see if the runner will run no advance cards. It's, you can, you know, if they're the kind that doesn't run, you're going to get a ton of money um, to replace your celebrity gifts or whatever. And, you know, the... Um, you know, I don't know why he doesn't just run and trash that melange. It's funny. I don't really need a ton of money here. I just, I really just needed the six. Um, maybe I use it once or twice more in the game. I don't, because, you know, I need to get things going. I have money. Because um, I've got melange. But he, he doesn't run and trash it immediately. Okay, so he, he draws up to four despite his brain damage. Then he runs a fetal, and I think he's going to score it. Um, so three damage from that, and it's four to one. Got to be careful, because I have three pointers in my deck. Um, but they're future perfects, and I do not plan on installing them. <laughs> I'd really like to see Jackson Howard so I could put them back in R&D or something. I don't, I don't think I'm going to see a Jackson Howard this game. Okay, so I've seen his Parasite game. I've seen his inclination to run R&D and not really HQ. 
Uh, I see that he's going to leave me the melange. I see that he's got a ton of money. It doesn't matter if I give him more money. So I stack R&D pretty deep here with ice. Uh, he's waiting for his um, his other mem chip to come out, I guess. And two brain damage. Yeah, diesel when you have two brain damage. Awesome. Throw some more cards out. See, he's playing a sure gamble when um, he's got a magnum opus. I, you know, I don't... It's like you're against Jinteki. That was like a net damage you gave up, which is worth way more than the two credit savings, I guess, right? It's like when I have tons of money and, a, and I'm playing against Jinteki, right, those economy cards just become, you know, damage shields. Uh, all right. So here he goes running R&D. There's an Inazuma, but of course he's kit with the Gordian Blade, so he can break it. Um, I don't know why he makes this decision, which is, uh, which, but he decides he wants to continue on this run. So he breaks the subroutine that says can't break subroutines on the next ice and doesn't break the subroutine that says can't jack out. So he can't jack out. I would have broken the jack out subroutine, right? Because you ca he has no means whatsoever to break any subroutines in the next ice. He's basically hoping that it's a code gate or a harmless ice, uh, like an end the run. Um, But he guess you know I don't know that's I just think that's a bad decision right you 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 can't go against Jinteki and and be willing to just face plant into an ice when you have two brain damage right so sure enough uh, he's face planting into this Fenris all brain damage. Um, I don't see and us bringing the bad pub token out, uh, which we should. But I, I did definitely, you know, say you get a bad pub, but you can't use it now, which is true. The bad pub from an illicit ice, uh, the court, well, the corp gets the bad pub, but really the runner gets it. They're the ones who use it. Um, but the uh, the bad pub is received right mid run. So if there was some card that actually mattered for that. You know, you do you question? Do you have bad pub? Yes, right. But the credit from the bad pub is created at the beginning of the run and disappears at the end of the run, so you can't use it on the run in which the illicit ice was resed. You can use it though um, on any future run. But yeah, we didn't uh, actually physically get the token for the bad pub, even though I definitely said um, there's a bad pub. I don't think it's really going to matter either. Just because he's so ridiculously rich and doesn't play a blackmail or anything, so. Okay, so score is four to one. I think a lot of agendas in my hand, but he's not running there. Only the future perfect will win him the game, and I'm pretty good at the side game lately. We'll see if any side games get played. And I install this fetal, unadvanced, unadvanced fetal. He just really doesn't want to pay for that mem shift to come out. Anytime, he can just pay the one. Boom. Or maybe he's waiting and he wants to get the most out of the workshop, right? Maximum efficiency. Yeah, see, okay, here is his game plan is, is really coming around. So he's going to parasite the Fenris, right? So clear out any cards, any ice that are resed that will stop uh, the kit machine from getting in accesses by parasiting them away. And he's just letting the parasite sit there and eat away. He's not going for the, the data sucker kill or anything like that, right? He'll just drop a parasite and wait. It's like, okay. Sort of annoying though, because you know the way my server is set up. Um, I mean, I set it up for the Fenris to hit, which was good, and it worked. He's got three brain damage now, but um, 
by parasiting, you know, I knew he was playing Parasite, by parasiting the Fenris out, the server becomes pretty useless, right? Because what's going to happen? The Inazuma will point at the data mine, the data mine will go away, and then the Inazuma will be sort of useless on its own. So basically, by parasiting the Fenris, the whole server becomes uh, unprotected. Okay, but I put an upgrade for protection instead. Because I don't, you know, I think I have a Yagura, which isn't going to protect anything against Kit. <laughs> so. If I could draw, like, another Fenris or any sort of damaging ice, I could put it out um, and then put the Yagura in front of it. I'd probably uninstall the Fenris. All right, so he's running HQ, uh, finally. And I'm going to res this Ichi just because it's really taxing. Um, I'm not going to be able to trash programs, right? Because he's got clone chips and whatnot. Um, I just want him to have to pay five credits, right? He's using his Gordian Blade, so I just wanted to spend five credits to run HQ, right? Um, which is two and a half magnum opus clicks, so it's that's pretty significant. And he accesses the Agura. I got lucky because my hand is full of agendas. <laughs> Now that he's got his big mem chip, he's parasiting the Ichi too. Yeah, pretty much any ice that annoys him, he's gonna parasite, and he's gonna use his Gordian Blade to break everything else. So really, that's gonna take four turns for that parasite to do its thing. Um, See, here he goes again, running running on the last click, right? And installing cards and then running, right? So he had two cards in his hand. I used my House of Knives, and that's right. So he, running last click, right? This is, this is basic anti-Jinteki. Don't run last click, right? Don't go installing cards and then running <laughs> because, you know, unless that card you installed was a Deus Ex, right? You're basically just making it more likely that you will die. And then... You know, if you only have two cards in your hand, and there's a house of knives, you can't run an unadvanced card. Hell, if you only have... Let's see. If there's an unadvanced card in Jinteki, and there's a house of knives, right? Uh, and that's a snare, you have to be prepared to take four damage on that run. Which means you have to have at least four cards in your hand uh, to make that run on an unprotected, unadvanced card, assuming the runner has, the corp has four credits to set off a snare, right? That's the most damage, I guess, you can take uh, from running an unadvanced card. So he ran an unadvanced card with two cards in his hand and a House of Knives scored with a, still a counter on it. So good thing I saved that House of Knives counter, um, right? Because I was able to use it to get a guaranteed kill uh, and not, you know, gamble it, uh, even though it would have been a good gamble. I sure, <laughs> I wasn't sure of it beforehand, <laughs> right? We were... There was no way to be sure of it. And then, in that situation, I wouldn't have actually won right there. Okay, so, playing criminal. But I'm not, again, not playing a new identity, playing the old Andromeda identity, just with fancy new cards. This game, though, was a learning experience for me, because my opponent's playing Jinteki, and I only know how to play against Jinteki one way, the green way. Get a Deus Ex <laughs> and run and draw cards. Uh, I have no idea how to play against Jinteki with Criminal. Um, you know, I mean, you're holding events in your hand. You know, so my old motto of net damage, it doesn't kill you, doesn't matter. is still true, mostly, but you're, 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 like, as important as an event is in the hand of a criminal is, is almost as how important a program is on the table for a shaper, right? So, you know, taking net damage as a criminal and losing an account siphon or something is like, you know, losing a, a program as a, as a secretary, uh, to a secretary, 
right? It's like, you can get it back. You've got same old thing and whatnot, right? But it's it's rather annoying. Like, those are your power cards that got hit. Um, you know, you still need to be able to win the game without them. So it's still, you know, it's just damage. It doesn't matter. But it's slightly more annoying to take the damage. And, you know, you don't have a lot of card draw, right? It's like, even if you're using Mr. Lee or something like that, you it doesn't let you draw more cards, replenish your hand more quickly. It just lets you replenish your hand with the right cards. Um, but Mr. Lee actually, you know, sort of hurts you because you're basically making your hand is even better, even juicier, right? For the net damage to, to hit better cards. Unless you purposely use Mr. Lee to put the crappy cards in your hand and then you play Window and get the good cards back uh, after, you know, you've you've lost all the cards you don't care about to net damage. That's, that's not... I, I just came up with that idea. That's not bad. But yeah, I have no idea how to play against Jinteki with Criminal. Uh, and it shows, right? Uh, I, you know, the only idea I had starting here um, was like, hey, what if, you know, I can just use account siphon um, to take all his money, and then he can't set off any traps except for, I guess, um, shock, and right. So if he has no money, he can't set off traps. I can run everything safely. So let's just try to siphon his brains out, right? And I got a little tunnel vision there trying to do that uh, and wasn't able to threaten anything else really uh, effectively. So yeah, this is this is some bumbling right here. <laughs> let's, let's watch me bumble. I also have a bad draw, right? Data suckers, which I don't need, and a corroder, <laughs> which I don't want right now. And I'm down to one credit. And the same old thing, right? So no sure gambles, no dirty laundries, no desperados, uh, no no economy cards to speak of in that opening hand. Uh, just two data suckers, right? Um, I installed four cards just to because of Andromeda, <laughs> and it's not going to run against either of those servers in turn one uh, against Jinteki, right? But I'm down to one credit. That you know, it, it's. I'm having some economy troubles as a criminal. That's that's bad, right? When you draw nine cards, um, that's, you know, out of 45 cards, that's 20% of the deck. And about 20% of the deck is economy cards, and I drew zero of them. It's not good. It's, and it, you know, really slows my start, right? My, slow, my start was already slowed by the fact that I can't be aggressive um, against this Jinteki play. Uh, as a criminal, I'm even less aggressive against it as I usually am, because I'm criminal, and not a shaper. Um, and now it's slowed even more by the lack of credits. See, I'm already, I'm, I'm pretty sure that right there is a house of knives. Um, but there's nothing I can do about it. So I run the remote. I run R and D. Right, figuring he's trying to save his money to res the ice on the remote. He lets me see R&D. I get some data suckers. I was figuring, okay, if I take net damage, who cares? Because I don't care about these cards. I want the card. You know, they're not the cards I'm looking for, right? So I'm like, I, I get, you know, even, I said I wasn't aggressive, but I'm basically, you know, not caring about the cards in my hand here. Oh, he does res. Oof, it's a Shiku. Um, what's it called? Koma Inu. So I'm going to lose my whole hand. Uh, so I lose my whole hand. Yep. 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 I lose my whole hand. So shut down vamp. Leverage I wasn't going to use. See, that was a lot of cards that I pretty much wasn't going to use against uh, Jinteki. Right? That's why the draw, you know, leverage especially. Uh, I think vamp was maybe the one card I would use. But really, I'm so broke. Uh, and I don't have any economy, so vamp isn't going to happen either. I need siphon first, and I have same old thing, so, um, right? But yeah, that Koma Inu really, um, you know, it got, it didn't, you know, made him spend the credits on it, which is, which is nice. Um, but it's still, you know, in, in the future, it will remain annoying, right? It's like, getting hit by it wasn't bad, because I lost all these cards I didn't want. But, um, you know, dealing with it again later is problematic because that thing is expensive to run through. 
because you're not going to run through it without a lot of cards in your hand. Um, and the more cards you have in your hand when you run it, the more credits it costs, because I don't have a cheap way to break a lot of subroutines with, you know, a mimic or whatever, right? And I don't have Parasite. This is why Parasite is so... I don't think you can have a runner deck that's viable these days without Parasite, right? It used to be that you could deal with any ice out there with with just breakers, right? Except maybe Woodcutter could get annoying if you don't have a Parasite, you know? And Woodcutter would just... Uh, I mean, Parasite just demolishes Woodcutter. All right, so here's a celebrity gift, right? And... In this case, it's like, ooh, thank you for this information, right? Now I know when he installs those unadvanced cards, they're probably, you know, he's, he's splashing purple assets. I don't have to worry about them being houses of knives or whatnot. Um, and I see that he has agendas in his hand, uh, which is great info, too. I'm happy to have. The major problem here is that Koma Inu <laughs> keeping me out from accessing them because it's like, oh, if I run and take all the damage from the Koma Inu and then take the agenda, then I lose. Right, because it's not game point. So, and one of them's a fetal, right? So, I think that's you know, that's the kind of celebrity gift play you need is the one where it's like, I'll show it to you. The information will help you, but there's nothing you can do with that information because ha ha ha, right? I think a really good card to have here for me would be sneak door, but I don't think I have a sneak door uh, in this deck, right? If I did, that would be super strong right now. I'd be able to shut down the Koma Inu where the sneak door shut down. I'd be able to grab those agendas out of HQ, right? Okay. Having trouble getting money, so I'm just taking credits by hand. I have never seen uh, a criminal deck with so few economy cards in my entire... In few, such a bad economy draw in my life, especially Andromeda. Um, I have some siphons, right? But I can't use them. I need the mimic and money first in order to siphon. Or a Crypsis, but that's even more expensive. Um, so, okay, now he's got his own house of knives that I couldn't do anything about. Did he do a net damage when he scored that house of knives? He should. Um, I don't know. Did did he mess up? Well, that's that's a game for you. Okay, so I'm drawing cards like crazy, right? Why am I drawing cards like crazy? Because I'm looking for economy cards, and I'm not finding them. Oh my god, I've never seen so few economy. All right, I have a Desperado in my hand now, right? That's not really economy. <laughs> that's not going to help. Um, right? It's not like I need the memory either. See, I'm throwing out this Yog. It's just too expensive to install. And I have another one. So, um, you know, I guess the other cards in my hand, you know, Planned Assault, um, the Count Siphon, right? It's like, those are the ones that are in the Desperado, I guess. Those are the ones that are waiting, right? But it's like, I, the cards are in the wrong order. I don't need Siphon now. I need Sure Gamble and Mimic now, or a Fairy or something. And then, boom, I can hit the Siphon. I guess this also, right, early on when I hit, first hit that Koma Inu, right, this shows my criminal inexperience. Um, I probably should have special ordered. Oh, you know what? This is so dumb of me, right? Oh, my God. See, this, this, is, this is showing how I don't know how to play criminal, right? I have the same old thing. There's def I'm pretty sure there's a special order in the trash. I could just special order a fairy and go siphon, 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 right? Um for no credits whatsoever. I could special order two fairies. Uh, but I didn't do it, even though I could have, right? Uh, so dumb. I'm so dumb. Right? I could have done that so long ago. I, this Jinteki guy, he would have been so broke, right? Um, and I just float all those tags, right? Because I can tell there's no tag punishment on his end uh, whatsoever. I can just tell. He doesn't have a Scorcher through a closed accounts in there. Um, so, uh, so dumb. 
So bad at criminal. Finally, a sure gamble. My kingdom for a sure gamble. Right? Finally got one. And I'm going to special order the mimic, right? Not the fairy. I should have gotten the fairy, but I got the mimic, right? That's fine. I'm still I'm sitting there with the mimic thinking, okay, he's got the Koma Inu. I have five credits and a mimic. Uh, I'm going to be able to go siphon, siphon, right? Um, and once I siphon once, I'll have enough money to, you know, siphon again. Okay, he scores. Right? I can't run those remotes. It's just, uh, you know, I don't... I, how do I run an advanced remote as uh, a criminal against Jinteki, right? As a shaper, I install my Deus Ex and run it. And it's like, if it's a cerebral, it hits. If it's Jinteki, I don't lose. If he double advances a Junebug, <laughs> right, and I'm a criminal, how do I run that? It, there's not, you know, leverage? It, that's, that's not going to work. I think, you know, you just have to go centrals only um, as a criminal. I, I don't know. Someone who who's plays criminal and knows what the hell they're doing, because I don't, as you can see. Um, you know, I need some anti Jinteki advice. How do you deal with those remotes? I mean, I guess if you siphon them down to no credits, they can't set off any traps, and then you can run the remotes. But other than that, I don't, I don't know what to do. Okay, so there he <sighs> installs an HQ. Great. Um, what do I do about that? <laughs> so I guess what I should have done here is just taken four credits. Right? Uh, but instead, I'm drawing and looking for money cards. And not really finding any. Well, there's Katie Jones, but I, I, why don't I use Katie Jones? I just feel like she's too slow. I don't, you know, I don't need three credits next turn. I need, you know, and it's like install. Just pay two to install Katie, fill Katie. Next turn, I empty Katie. I did. You know, that's that's not that's a loss, right? I'm going to need to pump her th a few times to, to get anything. And I'm in a, I'm in, you know, I have this tunnel vision. I want to siphon now, right? Well, he's only got the one ice on HQ. Um, right? I'm trying to, trying, I want to get my siphon off quickly. I've been holding on to these siphons. You know, net damage is incoming. All right? I got to make it happen. Got to make it happen. I couldn't see what that ice was. <sighs> okay. Okay, same old thing, special order, my remaining Yog, right? Why did I get my remaining Yog with my special order, right, before trying to siphon? Well, because I have to honor the fact, right, unlike my opponent who face-planted into a Fenris, right, I have to honor the fact that that f an ice in front of that Koma Inu could be an Inazuma. And if it is an Inazuma, then... Um, I would die because I would. He would just use House of Knives and call me. Inu, you're dead, right? Uh, so I need to be able to break the Inazuma uh, before running HQ, right? So the siphon is yet again delayed, right? And right now, that's pretty much all I can think about because I'm I'm basically helpless <laughs> against. Um, Anything he does in a remote, I, I just can't run um, for fear of death, especially those ice there, right? I just want to make him broke. It's like, that's it, all I'm thinking about is just take all his money and then none of his cards matter, then run like crazy, trashing everything. Also getting a ton of, you know, I'm having trouble with economy. If I can siphon just once, then I'd have so much money and I'm not going to remove the tags. So I'll be mega rich. I'll go from zero to a zillion, right? Um... You know what card I really need in this kind of situation? Armitage Code Bust. <laughs> that is the card I could really use. Um, maybe I should put some in this deck, right, for this kind of scenario. Hmm. All right, see, there he goes with the remote. Can't run it because he's got ice in front of it. You know? Um, 
And I've got all these breakers, but I got one credit. A criminal with one credit this late in the game. Have you ever heard of something so crazy? All right, so I'm running R&D. Why am I running R&D? He didn't res that ice before. I'm guessing it's not dangerous. Now I've got my second data sucker that I needed for the um, Inazu possible Inazuma, right? He does a net damage with this House of Knives. I don't see anything. All right, I draw back up to full health. <laughs> and I start taking money that I'm gonna, I need just enough money for the siphon run to succeed. All right, so I'm taking some money. And again, right, I'm sitting here thinking, what's the worst that could be on HQ? Inazuma, right? And I'm like, I got two data suckers in the Yogg. What's your Inazuma going to do? All right, okay, he scores. Medical breakthrough. I take a damage. It's a KD I didn't want to use. That's fine. Account siphon, yeah. So... I'm account siphoning, even though I only have three credits, right? Because I don't have to break all the subroutines in the Koma Inu, right? Um, I just need to break enough of them, right? To just get the siphon to hit, right? And it's Pup. Oh, shit, right? So I have three cards in my hand and three credits. If I spend two on the Pup, then I'm going to... It, it's uh, this ruins my whole thing. This pup, right? Because basically, with his house of knives, I need to to. Uh, it's not a good situation, right here. So I lose my siphon. <laughs> I break the two pup subroutines, and I jack out. Right, siphon fail. I mean, I guess theoretically, I could have paid two for the pup. Then lost my whole hand to the Koma Inu. Not access. Well, no. Uh, oh, that's right, because if I lose my whole hand... I need to have one card after the Koma Inu, right? Hits. Because if I say, yes, I'm going to access, and I try to hit with the Siphon, he can use his House of Knives then, and I would die, right? So, I can't... You know, I have to have a card left after the Koma Inu happens. Um... And he hasn't, assuming he hasn't used his House of Knives yet, right, um, on that uh, on that run, right? If he tries to use the House of Knives before the Koma Inu, I just need one credit, and then, okay. Uh, but if he uses the House of Knives after the Koma Inu, then I'd be dead. So I have to jack out immediately after the pup. <sighs> At least I know what's there, all right? So I need something like eight credits to siphon successfully... All right, Dirty Laundry Archives, Hail Mary, what's in there? It's, all right, finally I have some money. So now I think a siphon may be possible, all right? One, two, and then it, as, as many credits as there are cards in my hand. All right, but look at this. He's just, he's already at five points, right? Because I haven't been able to do anything. And it's game over because that medical breakthrough is a three advance. Wow, that was the slowest criminal in the entire universe. That was ridiculously frustrating to play. Um, I mean, I made some gigantic mistakes we all saw, right? I didn't special order the fairy, which would have allowed the early siphoning, and I would have been fine if I did that. But inexperience with criminal uh, meant that I didn't think of doing that. Um, you know, because he was Jinteki, and I don't have practice playing... Criminal against Jinteki. I don't know what the hell to do without my Deus Ex. Um, you know, I, I just didn't have... I only had one game plan, and I couldn't really think outside of it at all. Um, you know, I was, I was just stuck. Uh, and he was just scoring agendas. Just like, yeah, I'll just score. He was perfectly confident with whatever those ice were uh, that I couldn't deal with them. And what reason did he have to not be confident? I had no money. I was so broke, right? Uh, so, you know, the, the bad draw of no economy cards. What, one sure gamble the whole game, and then one dirty laundry on the last turn that didn't matter. Um, right? 
even drawing that dirty laundry one turn earlier, right, would have turned the whole game upside down. I would have been able to siphon. I would have been able to run the threaten the whole remote, right, and be able to keep him siphoned uh, basically permanently, right? You know, it's it's people say it's all about that first siphon. Yeah, uh, my deck is you know was ready not just to do a first siphon, but keep him permanently broke effectively. But I, you know, he <laughs> he didn't even rush the agendas. He just calmly and slowly installed them. And you know, an Andromeda deck played by someone who doesn't play criminal is just so slow. <laughs> um, yeah, <sighs> I'm definitely gonna special order a fairy. <laughs> Uh, next time I'm in that kind of situation, right? At least that's that's the first thing I need to learn. <laughs> well, the first thing I already have learned about criminal versus Chinteki. All right, let's let's hope these decks uh, do better in later rounds. <laughs> 